Hello, in this video lecture, I'm going to talk about the introduction to the Laplace transform. So um, this, this Laplace transform can be actually can be taught as a whole course. Um, so what we're going to do today um, in this video, I'm going to talk about um, the basically um, the, the necessary theorems that are needed for um, solving a differential equation. Okay. All right, so the first thing is we're going to define what a Laplace transform is. Okay. All right, so let's define what this is. Okay, so we're, we're going to have, we're going to let F be defined. So let f be a function defined for, let's say, t bigger or equal to zero. And let s be an element of the real numbers. And the Laplace transform. Okay, the Laplace transform of whatever this function is, okay, is the function let's denote this by F, capital F, okay, so we have F of S, okay, equals to the improper, the improper integral going from zero to infinity, of e to the minus st times f of t dt. All right, so, so we have an improper integral, right? Okay, so um, this is an, an improper integral with respect to t. And when we go through the mechanics of this, we end up with a function of s, okay? Okay, so for those values, of S for which for which this improper integral converges. Okay. So remember, so with these type of integrals, depending on what's going on in here, this may converge or diverge. And for those values of S that makes this converge, that is the result that we're interested in. Okay. And so also make you know um, we right, we're assuming that T, right? We're assuming that T is our independent variable here. Okay. All right, so basically what, what's going on here is let's say okay, we have set here, we have a collection of functions here and another collection of functions here. So let's say this is in this set, we have f of t, some function in terms of t. And when we apply the Laplace transform to this. So, okay, which is what this is, then our outcome, right? Our output is going to be some function in terms of S. So what we're doing, so basically what this is doing, again, you could think of this as a Laplace operator, okay? So you're basically taking a function in this domain, Right, and this T domain, and sometimes T here, um, if we're working with applications, sometimes T is um, referred to as the, as the time variable, okay? 
and we're basically transforming that function into the S uh, domain. All right, so now, okay, so let's, um, so let's take a closer look at this. And so and another thing here is engineering, a lot of times in engineering courses, uh, they refer to this as the time domain and this as the space domain. So that's com that's a very, or that's why or co a common notation is that we see that T is used here sometimes for time and then over here S is being used as space. So you're going from a time domain to a space, spatial domain. All right, let's look at, um, let's look at a, an example of this, okay? So what we wanna do, just to get familiar with this kind of, uh, this idea, let's go ahead and find the Laplace transform of, of one, okay? So looking at a beginner example. All right, so let's say we want to find the Laplace transform. Of F of T. Equals to one. Okay, so let's carefully go through this. Okay, so we have f of s equals to, okay, we apply our definition of the Laplace transform, which is nothing more than just an application or a direct application of an improper integral. Okay. We're going from zero to infinity of e to the minus st, right? And then our function of t is, in this case, is one. All right, there's our integral, okay? And obviously we can rewrite this as integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus st. And we're taking that integral with respect to t. So, okay, um, so from your calculus course, you learn that the first thing you should do here is to um, change, is to convert this into a limit. So I'm gonna use the, I'm gonna use B, okay, to denote the upper limit of this integral. So we want this part to approach infinity. So we have the limit as B approaches infinity, and then we take, right? And then we rewrite this as zero to B. Okay, so now let's go ahead and evaluate this. So we have the limit as B approaches infinity, uh, remember that we're taking the integral with respect to t. So in this case, when we do that, we're going to get uh, minus one over s here times e to the minus s t. Okay, and we, that's after taking the limit. We're going to evaluate from zero to b. All right. So you can get this result by just using the composition rule for integration. Right. You let you let some variable, let's say u be minus s of t or minus s times t. When you take the derivative, you get uh, minus s and then you take the reciprocal of that. Okay, and that's what you get. Okay, so it's just a, this is just a direct consequence of using the uh, composition rule for integration. All right, so now let's, um, we just need to apply the fundamental theorem of calculus here. Um, so we're gonna end up getting, let's see, Minus one over s okay, minus s times b. Okay, remember this is a function of t here, so we're okay. So we evaluate this at b and zero. This becomes plus because we have a minus here, so one over s e to the zero. Okay. All right, so this is going to give us all right. Um, 
Okay, so let's yeah, so let's take a careful look at this integral or this sorry this limit. Okay. Um, so there's going to be two situations here. Okay. All right. So let's first assume assume that s is strictly bigger than zero. Okay. If s is strictly bigger than zero. Okay. Then right here, what so what happens is that when you take when when you let b approach infinity here, okay, this is the same as this. Okay, so let's rewrite this. Let me clarify that. This is just e to zero, right? So that's one. So that's going to be plus one over s. Okay. So again, assuming that s is positive here. Okay. So we put this in a. So basically, I put this in a denominator, and as b goes to infinity, this term right here. Okay. This associated term goes to zero, and therefore we're left with one over s. Okay. All right. This goes to zero, okay, and then pretty much uh, we're left with this one over s. Okay. okay, so there it is. And there's the associated domain, right? So that was part of our assumption. So I'm just going to put that on the side here. So that's one case. Uh, another case is that um, obviously here S could be negative, right? It could be um, less than zero. So let's assume that. So going through this, so now going through the same process here, since S is negative, that's going to make that that's going to make this part positive because of the negative there. So we have the limit as b approaches infinity of minus one over s, okay, e to the s b plus one over s times e to the zero. But well, we know, or we already know that's going to be one over s. Uh, but what happens here? Well, again, this is this is positive, right? Because you take this s is negative. And you have a minus there, so that makes that a positive value right here. And B is approaching infinity, so that term is blowing up. Okay. So that goes basically goes out, right? It, it's unbounded. Okay. And regardless of what's happening here, right? Infinity plus one, well, that's still going to be infinity. Okay. So it diverges. Okay. Okay. And specifically, right, this is negative. Okay. So, <clears throat> um, right. so we have minus here. Okay. Uh, B goes to infinity. So, yeah. So, this technically is uh, there's a minus here. So, but in any case, it diverges. Okay. So, we're not interested in that case. Okay. Um, and so, oh, okay, so actually it's positive, sorry. Uh, this is negative, right? So therefore one over a negative value of minus here, so that becomes positive. But either way, it's divergent, right? Okay, and so that is, uh, we're not interested in that result, okay? We're only interested in, going back to the definition, right? We're only interested in values for which um, are functions of S for which it converges, right? Okay. All right, and what happens if, um, what happens if s is zero? Well, it can't be zero, right? Um, that's right, because it's it's going to be it's not in the um, domain here. Okay, so we can't have that situation. Okay, so here s cannot be equal to zero. Okay, so the result here, the overall result is that the Laplace okay, of one, the Laplace of one is going to be equal to one over s, where s is strictly bigger than zero. 
So that is our, that is the result. Okay. So that is a very simple example of finding the Laplace of a, of, of, in this case, of a constant. All right. So let's look at a different, let's look at another example. Sometimes when looking for uh, Laplace of, or taking the Laplace of a function, sometimes we can get a little bit clever, okay? So that we don't necessarily have to go through all this again. But let's let's go ahead and take a uh, take a closer look at that. So let's say we want to find the Laplace transform. Okay. Of the following function. Let's say e to the a t where A is some constant. By the way, going back here, we can think of this as a, um, as a pairing, okay? as a, what's called specifically a transform pair. Meaning that um, we can write, right, we can rewrite like this. So we have one and then an arrow or a bi directional arrow. So some books, they'll write it this way, meaning that Laplace of one is one over S, and then the inverse, what's called the inverse Laplace of one over S is one. So the inverse uh, is basically going the other way. And so we'll, we'll this, the inverse Laplace transform will be discussed in a separate video. Okay. All right. All right, so going back here, right, we want to find the Laplace transform of this function, e to the at, where a is a constant. All right, so like I said, sometimes we can get, uh, we can get a little bit clever in finding these transforms. So first thing is let's apply our definition of the Laplace transform. So we're going to get a function of s. Okay. So that's equal to the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus st times this. Okay. So we're taking the Laplace transform of that. Okay. So just like over here, we're finding the Laplace transform of one. So we put it next to e to the minus st. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and simplify this. So algebraically, okay, this part here can be written as e to the at minus st, which is the same, which is the same as this. So we can take out minus s, and that will leave us with, sorry, uh, minus minus t, let's do it this way. Right this way, I'm gonna factor out t, but I'm gonna put it on the other side. So this is just gonna be minus s minus a times t. All right, so this is the same as this part, right? Okay. All right, so, we can utilize this first example okay, in finding this one. Okay. Um, so, so what we have here, 
is that this So what we can do uh, is we can, right? So we basically we have, what we have here, right? Is, um, is kind of like what we have over here, okay? Um, right? So going back to this part, okay? So if we let, okay, what we have, so we have minus S, okay? So this part, right? We can apply that derivation to this. Okay. Right, so what we can do is we can let, let's see, we can let capital S be equal to S minus A, and then apply that idea. Because we already did the work, we might as well take advantage of it. Okay. All right, so, okay, so that means okay, this is going to give us Okay, without going through the um, specific calculations here, um, we have a result. Okay, so this is just going to be one over, okay, S minus A. Again, how we got this? Well, again, we just look here. So this is a function of S, right? Whatever S is, I can replace that by, okay? In this case, we're letting S, we're letting capital S be equal to this. Okay, so we just replace, right? We just replace this S with S minus A, and that gives us a result. Okay. Now keep in mind here um, that S must be bigger than A. Right? Okay. And that's just going back here, right? So we said. Because S, because S minus A, S minus A is strictly bigger than zero. So this implies that S must be bigger than A. Okay? So that's the domain okay, for our function. Okay, therefore, right, we, right, we show that the Laplace of E to the AT is equal to one over S minus A. All right, so the bottom line is you have an A value in front of here, okay? Uh, basically, this is the form you get, okay? So for example, let's say you're looking for the Laplace transform of E to the, um, let's say minus 40. Then we don't have to go through and rederive all this. Just use basically just use the results. In fact, there's some. Um, in fact, there's a Laplace table um, that that is in um, that's in a lot of the differential equations books and engineering books um, that have a table of functions and their corresponding Laplace transforms. Okay. So that will be. I'll show you that later. So the Laplace of something like this is just going to be one over. Okay. A here is acting as minus four, so this is just one over S plus four. Okay. Or S is bigger than negative four. Okay. So that's uh, a nice little application there. Uh, we can also talk about Laplace transforms of, um, of trig functions. Okay. So let's do, let's look at that for the next example. Thank you. 
Okay, so let's say we want to find the Laplace transform of, in this case, of sine of omega t and cosine omega t. Where omega is constant. Okay. okay, so let's apply our definition. Okay. So again, we can do this. Um, we can get both of these um, relatively easy, actually. Um, by being a little bit clever here, okay? Okay, so we're going to let f of s be equal to the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus st times sine of omega t, dt. So again, just setting up or just applying our Laplace transform definition. And g of s, uh, we can set that up, or we can let g of s be equal to the other one. Okay. All right, so um, let's focus on um, f of s. So for this, we have a product of two functions here. Um, so without, you know, um, so in this case, we need to use the product rule for integration, right? Which is also known as integration by parts, okay? All right, so when we do that, okay, we end up, well, let's first, yeah, let's first take the limit here. Set up our limit. Okay. Okay, and then applying the integration by parts, right? Okay, we end up getting this. So we're gonna take the limit as B approaches infinity. We have um, E, let's see, minus E to the negative S T divided by S times sine omega T. And then plus the other part. Okay. So again, this is coming from basically just applying the integration by parts here. So you have you have this part. Okay, so that's the u times v minus the integral of v du. That part is here. Okay. Okay. So um, let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and evaluate this first part. Okay. All right. So since v is going to infinity here, okay, and what we need to so we need to go ahead and evaluate this. So plugging in B and then we plug in zero, right? So there's a negative here. So therefore this has to be plus. Um, so that's gonna be E to the zero when you replace T with zero. And then, so that's gonna be one. And then sine zero obviously is going to be zero. So this is going to leave us with one over s. All right. And then we have the other part here. Okay. 
So there's a reason why I'm not going. So, so basically, if you remember from calculus, okay, um, whenever you have this kind of function, right, with sine or cosine, it's it becomes a cycle, right? And then eventually you could solve it, but 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 like I said, um, there's a clever way to do this to find, to basically find both of these at once, and that's what I'm that's what I'm trying to convince you here. Uh, all right, so. All right, so um, let's go ahead and take the limit of this part, okay? So this is going to give us, as B approaches infinity here, um, this part right here is going to go to zero. And then we're left with one over S, okay? So one over S and then plus the limit as B approaches infinity of this part. All right, so let's see. So this, right, we have one over S, okay? And this right here, um, this is just the definition of the Laplace transform for cosine omega t, right? right? With, um, and then W, and then omega, sorry, omega over S is a constant, so we can rewrite this. We have omega over s times the Laplace transform of cosine omega t. We can leave it in this form, okay, for now. Okay. Which is right, omega over s. Or, I'm sorry, Laplace of omega over t. Um, that is just this, right? That is f of s. Okay, going back up here. All right, that's what we have here. Okay. So this is just a little plus, right? The little plus of omega. Oh, sorry, of cosine omega t. Okay. All right. All right. So we'll leave that there for a moment. Let's um, let's work on the other one for for G of s. So going through the kind of a similar process. Okay, I'm gonna call this, we're gonna go back to this later. Um, let's see. Yeah, one over S. Oh, this, sorry. So one over S, this is going to go to zero here. So uh, what happens to my one over S here? Oh, it's one. Let's see. I think I should have. That's for F of S. So what happened here? Why do I have one over S there? Hmm. Um, Oh, okay. I'm sorry. So yeah. So sine zero is opposite zero. So, um, so slight over. Right, so this is going to be basically zero here. Sine of zero is zero. So we don't have a one over this. Okay. Okay. So yeah. So again. Um, so sine zero obviously is going to be zero. Um, and then we got E zero is one, but then right, that still gives us zero. Okay, so this looks better. Okay. So we only get omega over S times F of S. All right. Okay. Um, Laplace and F of S, this is Laplace of omega, cosine omega T, so that's G of X. All right. All right. So this, well, this is just the, so this is just stands for the Laplace of cosine omega t. That's what we have there. 
This is G of S. Okay. All right. No problem. Everything's fine. Now let's work on the function G of S. Okay. And then what we're going to do, we're going so we're going to get, we're going to figure out this. We're going to rewrite this part. Okay. And then, um, and then we'll end up with a, with a, um, a coupled system here. All right, so for G of S, all right, for G of S, okay, we have the limit, okay. As B approaches infinity, so we're going from zero to B, uh, B to the minus ST times cosine omega T, DT. Again, you can use the product rule for integration here, just like we did for um, f of s. All right, so you end up getting so we're going to get minus e to the negative st over s times cosine omega t. That is going to be evaluated from zero to B. And then minus omega over S times the integral from zero to infinity of E to the minus sine T cosine omega T dt. Okay. Okay, so applying the limit to this, we get minus, okay, uh, this is going to be E to the minus SB over S times cosine omega B. Minus, actually plus, we get, again, so E, so plugging this in for T, we get E of zero, which is one, right? We get one over S. Um, in this case, and the cosine of zero is just going to be one. So in this case, we do get, uh, we do end up with omega over s here. Okay. Um, let's see, yeah, well, actually, sorry, we end up getting uh, one over s. So. Okay, again, plug in that cosine, right, plug in zero here, you get cosine zero is one, and then we get e to the zero, which is one over um, S, but then we have for this we have minus minus makes it plus. Okay. And then over here we have omega over S times the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus S T times cosine omega T. Okay, um, so. All right, so capture all that. So taking the limit of this, e to the, so this is minus, so this is going to go to zero, right? Um, that's going to leave us with, okay, that's going to leave us with one over s minus omega over s times the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus st times cosine omega t. T. Okay. And again, this part, just like over here, okay, just to reiterate here, okay, this part right here, okay, that is basically that is the Laplace transform of cosine omega t. So that's replaced by g of s. Okay. For here, okay. And this part that is the Laplace transform okay, of uh, actually it's a cosine. Hold on, that should be uh, here. Yeah, that should be sine because I'm using cosine here. So this is so I'm going to again. This is just an application, right? Just using integration by parts here. So we get cosine here, and then this should be. This should be sine. 
Okay, so there we go. So this is just the Laplace transform of sine omega t, which is defined as f of s. So we end up getting one over s minus omega over s times f of s. Okay. Alrighty, so, um, so now, okay, so this is g of s, right? And that is, over there is, um, this is f of s. So let's write those two equations out. Let's do that here. Okay. So in fact, I want to call this, let's, let's write those over here actually. All right, so from the first, from the first derivation, okay, we have, um, this was for, um, if I recall correctly, yeah, that's for f of s. Okay, so we have, so f of s was equal to, we got to this point. Okay. So f of s is equal to omega over s times g of s. And then this was for g of s. So g of s was one over s minus omega over s times f of s. Okay, so we have basically we have a um, a system, okay, a system of functions here. Okay, so we so we can solve this. Right? Okay. Let's call this one, and we'll call this equation two. So what I did here, or what we can do here, is we can substitute one into two. Okay. So f of s is equal to this. Okay. So we're gonna end up getting g of s equal to one over s minus omega over s times omega over s times g of s. So substituting this into, into here. Okay. And then this is going to give us, uh, basically we have, G of s equal to one over s minus omega squared or s squared times g of s. Our goal, right? Obviously, our goal here is to is to find g of s and f of s, so we can easily solve for g of s now. Um, okay, so um, this let's go up here. So g of s. Okay, moving this term over and then factor out g of s. This is going to be one, one plus omega squared over s squared equals to one over s. Okay. okay. Um, so now g of s. Okay, this can be written as um, so we can divide. We can take one over s and divide by one plus omega squared over s squared. All right, and we can write this in a cleaner way. Okay, we can do that just by multiplying each term, or in other words, uh, multiplying the top and bottom by s squared. Okay, so multiply each term by s, right? multiply top and bottom by s squared. So I'll just indicate that here. Okay, so this is going to give us so we get s on top, and then we have s squared plus omega squared. And keep in mind that, that s, s is strictly bigger than zero. Okay. So there is g of s. Um, okay, so g of s, so that is basically, that is the Laplace transform of cosine omega t.
So whatever omega is here, right, you're going to put it into this omega. So now with that, um, we can go ahead and find um, f of s. All right, so f of s, right? Um, so f of s, so basically, um, we can get that by going back here, okay? We have the expression, right? We have our expression for g of s. So what we can do is plug that back into here. Okay, okay so since g of s is equal to s over s squared plus omega squared, then f of s is going to be omega over s times s over s squared plus omega squared. Okay, and um, obviously here s is cancel out, right? So we end up getting omega over s squared plus omega squared. Okay. Where S again is strictly bigger than zero. So that turns out to be, right? This turns out to be the Laplace transform of sine of omega p. Okay, so there it is. So, you know, we went through, we derived these, um, you know, these are basically um, paired up, you know, they look very similar to each other. So we were able to derive them without going into too much detail um, with actually evaluating the integral. So these are complementary of, of, these are basically complementary of each other. All right, so there is, like I mentioned, there is a table uh, there's a, what's called Laplace or a table of Laplace transforms, okay? Because sometimes, you know, deriving these can be really, um, it could be, you know, take, it would take time, okay? So luckily we do have a table that we use um, for these. Um, so let me try, let me bring that up here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and share the screen here. All right, so this is basically the, the, the uh, table of Laplace transforms that I was telling you about. Uh, right here, you can see that for the first one, the Laplace of one, okay, is, okay, um, one over S. So this is the, right, so here, these are the functions, right? And then, um, right, and then over here is the 
basically the, uh, the Laplace of those functions in terms of S. Okay. And if you right, if you look here, if you notice, here is the Laplace of sine, right? So here's sine of AT. In this case, they're using A instead of omega. So it's the same idea, right? A is the constant. So Laplace of sine AT, that's just going to be A over S squared plus A squared. Okay, that is what we derived a while ago. And okay. let's see. Yeah. Okay. And then for cosine at, right, we have s over s squared plus a squared, where a is the constant. Okay. All right. And there are some others here. Okay. Notice this one right here, this is t to the n, e to the at. So depending on, right, so depending on what the power is here, okay, for n, then you're gonna have to take factorial of that. Right? So, um, so the larger the n value, the larger this value, this, this um, plus transform is. We have one for the heavy side function, which is just a shift. And then um, you have the direct delta functions. Okay, those are pretty interesting. Those are used more commonly in physics. Um, you have that. Okay, so you have some other combinations here. Here's e to the at, which is the one we just derived a while ago. Um, and then you have, if you notice down here, you can, um, there is a way to take the Laplace of a derivative. Okay, so this is for the first derivative. This is what it looks like. This is for the second derivative. So these we'll be looking at, we'll be deriving those later on. Okay, in another video. And then you have the general form. So you have the nth derivative of f, f, of f of t. So that's the general form here. Okay. So we'll be using, so the idea here, um, the general idea is that we can use this to solve a, uh, the goal, or actually the goal here is to basically use a Laplace transform, okay, to solve a differential equation. So the idea is you take, you're given, let's say you're given a homogeneous differential equation, it doesn't, well, it doesn't necessarily have to be homogeneous. Let's say you have a um, uh, in order differential equation, right, uh, with some initial values, okay? So you can take, the idea is to take the Laplace transform of both sides, and then with that, it is possible, right, we can actually, um, from there, you can implement the initial values. And then what you do is you take, um, you figure out the Laplace transform each, of each term, and then you go through and solve it, set it up in a certain way, and then use the inverse Laplace transform to come up with the solution. So that process, we're, go we're gonna discuss this um, in another video, okay? So like I said, this video is just primarily concerned on, it's just an introduction um, to this Laplace transform. Okay, so let's look at um, let's look at a theorem. Right. This is a very important theorem for what we're going to do later. Okay, the linearity property for the Laplace transform. Okay. All right, so the idea here, okay, is that if, okay, if you have the Laplace transform of, let's say, um, let's say F1 plus or minus F2 plus or minus dot, 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 plus or minus F of N. Okay, and each one of these, right, f1, f2, f of n is some, it represents a function, okay? So the idea, right, is that this, you can split these up. Okay. 
into smaller Laplace into smaller Laplace problems. Okay, so if you have right, if you have this, you can split. You can take the Laplace of each one separately. Okay. The second one is that if you have a constant times, let's say, a function, then you can take that. Right, you can take that constant out. Okay, so C here is the constant. So basically, you can take this outside the Laplace operator. Okay. Um, so this really shouldn't be that surprising uh, because remember, the Laplace is just it basically is just taking the improper integral, right? You're taking that e to the you're taking e to the minus st times uh, whatever these functions are. So, and if you think back, if you recall to let's say if you recall to calculus one. Um, there you learn that the integral right operator, right? The integral operator is also linear. So it comes out, it, so this um, is basically, it's a natural consequence for that, okay? Right. So putting these together, right? If we merge these together, we get what's called the superposition principle. So sometimes a lot of textbooks they write out this way. So, this can be consolidated. So if you have C1 times F1 plus or minus C2, F2 plus or minus dot dot dot, Cn, F of n. So let's say we have a, a finite collection of these. So then we can take, right, basically you can separate these. Right, using the first property, and then using the second one, you can take out the constants from each one of these. Okay, so this is primarily going from here to here. This is sometimes referred to as the superposition principle. Just a fancy name. So again, it's just superposition principle is basically a consolidation between those two properties for linearity. Okay. And we see this often, right? Again, this uh, we know that the okay, we know limits, right? Limits are linear is a linear, you can think of limits as a linear operator. Um, the derivative is a linear operator. The integral is a linear operator. Right? Um, summations are a linear operator. In fact, because summations are, is a linear operator, therefore, as a, as a consequence, um, integrals is a linear operator. And so, therefore, this is a linear operator. Okay? Uh, very nice, very nice property to work with um, because not all operators are linear. Okay? All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, so let's so let's look at in more detail. So let's look at the proof of this. Okay. All right, so we're going to um, show this for n equals to two, but once you want to understand this, then this can be, um, you can generalize this through, um, uh, through mathematical induction. All right, so we have Laplace of C1, F1, plus or minus C2, F of two. Okay, so we want to show, basically we want to show that um, this is equal to C1 times Laplace F1 plus or minus C2 times the Laplace of F2. So we can go ahead and apply, um, we can go ahead and take, or go ahead and 
apply the integral here. So this is going to be the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus st times c1 f1 plus or minus c2 f2. And we take the integral with respect to t, right? Um, yeah, so, all right. So then from there, okay, um, the rest is pretty obvious here. You can, because the fact that the integral, the integral can be thought of as an operator, it's also linear. We can split this up. my e to the minus st here. All right, that looks better. Okay. Um, C1 and C2 are constants. Okay, so we can take those outside the integral. Okay. And what we're left with, um, it basically, this part right here, okay, okay, that is just the Laplace of F1, and this is the Laplace of F2 by definition. C1 times the Laplace of F1 plus or minus C2 times the Laplace of F2. And basically that's, right, that's what we want to show, right? We want to show that this was equal to this. And again, this can be generalized for, um, for any values bigger or, you know, bigger than two. Okay. So again, it's really, it, you know, this really shouldn't come as a surprise. It's, it's a direct result from the fact that the, um, that the integral operator is also linear. And like I said, I mean, so this is going to be important because again, what we're going to, we're going to use this for is that we have our differential equation, right? And then what we can do is we take the Laplace of both sides, and then we can use this to basically split up, take the Laplace of each term, and then and then go from there. Okay. So again, this is a very nice property in math to work with. Uh, we're very fortunate that this can be done because not every operator can be can be um, not every operator you can do this with. Okay. All right. Oh, uh, let's see. Let's. So let me show you. Let me. So let me show you. Um, let me go over an example where we can where we can apply this. Okay. All right. I'm going to go over here. All right, so let's say um, uh, let's say in this example, we want to use the linearity property. And this 
says, right, the Laplace, right, the, the Laplace of E, A, of e to the A T, which we already derived is one over S minus A, um, to find the Laplace of the hyperbolic cosine of B, uh, B times D. Okay. Or B not equal to zero. Okay. All right. So we have to go back to the definition of this. Okay. If you remember from pre calculus, um, I don't know about your class. I don't know if you, if you took pre calculus. I mean, some professors cover this, some don't, uh, but I definitely cover what this is, what the hyperbolic cosine is. Um, sometimes that's covered in count one, but in any case, um, we know by definition, okay, we know that hyperbolic cosine, okay, right, in general, so let me write the general form. So in general, the hyperbolic cosine of, let's say X, okay, is basically E, okay, E to the X plus E to the minus X over two. Okay. And that's not too, well, it, it's a little bit of work to derive this actually. Um, but in any case, we use the definition here. Uh, by the way, just in case, the hyperbolic cosine okay, of X is going to be E to the X minus E to the negative X over two. So oh, yeah, we can uh, definitely take advantage of those uh, properties, okay? So for, uh, for this one, okay, this is just going to be e to the bt plus e to the minus bt over two. So taking the Laplace of this will be equivalent to taking the Laplace of this. Okay. okay. So there's our setup. Okay. So using the um, the fact that the Laplace is a linear operator. Apply that here. Going up here, okay, this is going to be, right, this is the same as, well, first of all, right, this is, well, you can rewrite this way. This is just e to the bt over 2 plus e to the minus bt over 2. And then using the fact that the Laplace is a linear operator, we can split this up. Okay, and then one half, right? We're divided by two. So that's, we can take the constants out again because the Laplace is a linear operator. So we have one half times the Laplace of e to the bt plus one half times the Laplace of e to the minus bt. And we've already derived the, the uh, we've already derived the definition for the Laplace of e to the bt, right? That was this one. So, for this one, okay, we're going to get one half times, it's going to be one over B minus A, okay? Over here, we get one half times one over B plus A. Since B is, uh, okay, uh, since, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I wrote, sorry, I forgot. We're in terms of S, so this will be, sorry, my fault, uh, S minus B. Over here, this will be S plus A. S plus B. Okay, so yeah, that makes more sense. Okay, so we have a result here. Um, so we can um, we can actually 
clean this up a little bit more. Okay. Um, right, we have, we can multiply this one by S plus B and this one by S minus B. So, so right this way. I want to multiply this side by S minus B. Okay, and this is going to give us, okay, so we have S plus B plus S minus B over basically S squared minus B squared. And this is going to be one half of S. We get one over we have basically 2s over s squared minus b squared. And um, obviously the one half and two cancels out and that's gonna leave us with s over s squared minus b squared. Okay, there it is. And s here, right, has to be bigger than the absolute value of b because it's squared here. Okay, that is our result, okay? Um, so therefore, the Laplace of cosine dt, okay, I'm sorry, hyperbolic cosine of dt is equal to s over s squared minus b squared. Where s is strictly bigger than the absolute value of b. Right. So that is... So using, so you can see here, using the linear property, right? Using the fact that the plus is a linear operator, uh, we can avoid, uh, basically avoid taking the improper, right, integral of this function times e to the minus st. And, um, that would not be, that would be a little bit more work to do that. Okay? So we just rely on the fact that, right? Um, we basically rely on the, the fact that Laplace of e to at is this. And then using the linear operator, we can get a result. Okay. And if you look this up in a table, right, you'll see that they have this form. All right, last theorem here, okay. Okay, so if we have a function of s, okay, so if f of s is equal to this, okay, that is, is the right, this is. Basically, this is just a Laplace transform of f of t. Then f of s minus a, so if we do a shifting here, okay, is. So oh, the Laplace transform, okay, this is the Laplace transform of e to the at times uh, f of t. Okay. So it's a nice, very nice property here. So in other words, if we have this and we're doing a shifting, whether a is positive or negative, then we basically just multiply by e, multiply this by e to the at. All right, so the proof of this is pretty straightforward.
So what we're going to do um, is we're going to let, all we need to do is let S be equal to S minus A. Oh. All right. Then you can basically use this result, okay? So we're going to have F of S minus A Is equal to the improper integral, right? From zero to infinity of E. So just using this one, replace S with S minus A. So we get minus S minus A T D T. Okay, so all we did is, you know, it's basically just a function, right? So you replace this with S minus A and to there, and you get this, okay? Times, sorry, times F of T, of course. Okay. So, um, using a little bit of algebra here, we can rewrite this, um, okay? This is going to be e to the, so this is e to the minus st times e to the at, right? Okay, so this, right, this part is algebraic, algebraically equivalent to this, right? and using the same base. So now, We have, we can isolate this part, right? Okay, e to the minus st, and then we have times this. I put a bracket there just to emphasize that result, okay? So this, right, this is e to the minus st, and then you multiply it by this. So that is, so therefore, right, this is the Laplace transform of this function, okay? Okay, right, um, there it is, okay. So F of S, F, sorry, F of S minus A is the Laplace of this, okay. Okay, that's what we want to, right, this is what we want to show, okay. If F, F S minus A is the Laplace transform of this, okay. So, Again, this is a useful theorem because you don't have to, you know, if we're given, you know, for, if we want to figure out what this is, where A is constant here, we don't have to go through the, the whole setup of taking the improper integral and then taking say, the limits and getting the result, right? You can just use this directly, use this result, okay? So there's a lot of, um, yeah, there are a lot of interesting ways, right, uh, to come up with a Laplace transform so that you can avoid taking the integral, okay? Um, sometimes, so sometimes there is a, a way to avoid it, sometimes there isn't, okay? Uh, so again, um, so in this video, basically just present it, basically just introduce the idea of Laplace, tra of Laplace transform. Um, there are many different Laplace, sorry, there are many different transforms out there. Um, you have what's, especially like what's called the Z transform, um, you have, um, uh, there are, you know, there are others, okay, Z transforms, uh, and then there's uh, sometimes T transforms, okay, so, um, so this one, the plus transform will be very useful for uh, what we're going to do later, okay, uh, which is going, which is basically to solve a initial value problem, okay, so next time, right, uh, next time, I'm gonna, we're going to talk about the inverse Laplace transform, okay? So again, the idea, right? Going back to what we talked about in the beginning, okay? So you have, right, so you have F of T here, so you have something in T, in your T domain, and we're taking the Laplace transform of our function, so we're going to get something in terms of S, okay? In the S domain, okay, which is sometimes referred to as the space domain, okay? So that because so again, this becomes so T time and space domain 
um, spatial domain that becomes more relevant in, in, in engineering, especially with signal processing. Um, but in any case, we're going to talk about we're going to talk about the inverse of this. And luckily, we have the table uh, that can help us out. But there is, of course, then um, we need to, you know, if you have something more complicated, right, on this side, then we need to somehow decompose it, right, and then go back from here to here. Okay, so one of the techniques to do that. Is what's called the heavy side method. Okay. So we'll talk about that next time. Okay. Oh, sorry. So we're going to be going. The interest, the interest is that we're going to give it something here. Uh, we want to take the inverse, the Laplace inverse. Yes. And it turns out um, that the Laplace inverse is also um, a linear operator, which is which makes sense. Okay. Because generally, if something, if you're going from one set to another, okay. You're going from set A to set B. If that is through a, if that operator is linear, then uh, then this uh, going from here to here is also going to be linear. So that's a natural consequence. Okay. Just like with integrals, right? You take right? so if you're going from here to here, you take for example, you take the derivative. That is a linear operator. So therefore, as a natural consequence. You're going the other way, which which is the antiderivative, like the, like the integral. The integral is um, is also linear. Okay. All right, so I'll go ahead and stop here. Okay, um, like I said, the Laplace transform. This can be this in itself can be a whole course as a math. Um, if you're going to um, if you're major if you're playing to major math, um, you'll take a, a whole class on this. All right, so. This is just basically what I showed here is just skimming the, it's just the tip of the iceberg, all right? Um, and it's enough, to be honest, it's enough for what we need for, for um, solving a differential equation and particularly initial value problem, okay? So, all right, um, so I'll stop here, okay? And uh, see y'all next time.